Okay, so uh, why don't we call this meeting to order? Uh, we have everyone here, uh, myself, Amy Fiden, Valerie Hood, Paul Benjamin, Dylan uh, Barstow Mans, might have said that backwards, sorry, Dylan, and Alexi Levine. <laughs> uh, so, Finance Committee meeting and um, so what is on our agenda tonight, we were going to uh, discuss um, just because it's our first meeting, um, pretty much before we start the budget, we, I thought we could bring up um, if we want to discuss, you know, because we haven't discussed it much, uh, if we wanted in the new chair, a vice chair, um, someone to take the minutes, uh, we also could talk about representation a finance committee, anybody that wants to do any of uh, the committees, liaisons to um, all the department heads. Um, and then we're gonna focus on um, listening to Linda and Carolyn with the budget book. And then um, basically the big thing we're gonna do tonight is uh, set all the meetings for all the departments where we meet everyone. So we'll have our calendars open and uh, make all those meetings for the rest of the time before the uh, town meeting. So, um, all right, so to start, uh, let's go over um, chair, vice chair, um, and uh, clerk. I nominate um, Amy Fiden as chair. Second. There we go. I, I don't mind doing it again. <laughs> <laughs> I just- uh, Exit through I, the gift shop, right? <laughs> Well, it's not like it's all, it, you know, everything is Carolyn and Linda, you know, all we right. do is listen to them pretty much. Uh, they do the hard work by doing the budget and doing everything. All we're doing is just watching and, and asking a lot of questions. So I don't, I don't have to prepare. And Jennifer is fabulous because she does all the Zoom for me. So all I do is just say the same thing over and over again. Okay, great. So, um, uh, I think we need a vote, don't we? So let's put that to vote. Yeah. Aye. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Great. And so um, how about a vice chair? Um, I nominate Paul. Paul? Okay. I, <laughs> I second knew that it. Was <laughs> <laughs> I'll second that. Um, any other discussion? If none, all in favor? Aye. I'll, I'll abstain okay. for obvious reasons. How about a uh, clerk, someone that's willing to take the votes, the, the, um, or any, I mean, a lot, we don't need it to be details for minutes, but we do need to have something which we haven't been doing too much of because um, <coughs> it's it videoed, but we should have, we have to have certain things documented and I'm sure Carolyn will appreciate that. <laughs> I would very much. <laughs> um, I don't want to do it. <laughs> oh, oh. Anybody capable or have time? Alexei? <laughs> no, I don't want to do it, but uh, but uh, Blake, Val's son showed us this app that uh, can take minutes for you automatically. It's amazing. I, I forget okay. what it's called, but I can ask him again. Hmm. It's Nominate like them for clerk. The app for clerk. <laughs> 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 Dylan, could you handle it? Um, Speaking as a new vice chair. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would rather, I would rather not uh, with the, I'm co-chairing the Hadley uh, Economic Development Committee and I feel like I want to keep okay. from getting into too many obligations. Well, I could probably just take our our um, agenda and turn it into some type of minutes by putting in the votes. So um, I'll, I'll uh, Val Valerie, would you be willing to, or? I mean, no, I'm sorry. I, 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 I'm sorry. I don't want to do it. Okay. okay. Anybody right. miss this meeting? We could just vote them in or <laughs> that's, that's a standard <laughs> tradition. I think in this position, you miss the meeting, you end up on as clerk. Um, yeah. Just well, like I said, I'll take my I'll take my agenda. I'll uh, I'll throw some I'll I'll throw the votes. Who does what on the votes, okay. and we'll take the minutes. Is that acceptable, Carolyn? 
Yeah, and Amy, I'll t- I'll be taking notes too. It's just once I start talking, I lose focus, and so I don't. My notes aren't perfect, but we can compare notes and see what we can put together. Okay. Well, if there, I mean, frankly, if there's an app that takes down the meeting, just translates it into a Word doc, that would certainly, if that's something we could have, you know, that would make it very easy for Amy then to just grab grab out, you know, the votes and the information. That might be something, uh, you know. Um, I mean, there's all get, recognition for automatic, you know, for uh, subtitles. You know, I'll get the uh, the info and I'll I'll email it to, okay. to you guys. So Thank you. It, it might be different than the one I'm aware of, but I think that um, uh, it might be over inclusive. I think that Amy's idea that you use the agenda and you hit those uh, high points, points right. that boom, boom, boom. And then uh, when you go off onto other tangents and discuss things mm-hmm. uh, or discuss it at length, that really doesn't need to be a part of your minute. So I think that I like the idea of getting down and concise. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. All right. So um, we'll just, uh, that's how we'll handle the minutes. Um, anybody, we have a few other um, committees that we, as representation from the finance committee, um, can be on. Okay, one of them is the bylaws um, committee. They talked about that. I don't believe anybody represents the finance committee on that one. Um, not that I don't know if it's a huge deal. I know that it was talked about at one point. They they wanted someone, but no one um, was able to do that. Um, CPA. Um, right now I've been on CPA representing, um, um, the CPA, uh, if someone else wanted to be on that, that would be fine. If if someone else wanted that, I've been on it a long time. So I would share, (laughs) um, capital, uh, planning. I've been doing that as well. Um, if like, once again, if someone else wanted to do capital planning and Hadley economic development committee. Um, I'm on that with Dylan. I'm going to, I'll stay on that for a while, only until the Valley CDC project's done. And then Dylan's on that already. Um, I'll probably drop off of that because he's already on it. But I felt like, well, I have input there for um, um, what's happening with Valley CDC. I'd stay on there to just to keep everyone informed. But if there's anything that anyone else wanted to pick up, do, do you have any idea how long, I mean, how many meetings the Capitol, I mean, m- my problem right now is time. I'm having enough trouble, you know, making sure, especially during the high season, getting to all these meetings right now. And I don't, sure. I don't know that I can make new commitments, but, you know, if there is, you know, I could fill in once in a while, but I, I'm, you know, I don't want to make a full commitment right now just because I don't have the time. Um, okay. It's up to you. If you wanted it, I, you know, that one's not, both CP, I, I, all any of these finance committee is the one that takes the time, right? Okay, that's the one where you're, you're that's your biggest commitment. All these other ones, I have, I have no idea about bylaws. Um, yeah. I just don't be a know. long one because that'll go on for Not a while sure about that. Um, CPA, I mean, on that one, probably it's two times unless they have, have an extra meeting, it's two times before. Um, before spring meeting, two times before fall meeting. That's pretty much it. And it's probably hour to two hour meetings. Capital, hour meetings, it's usually two times, once again, two times before spring, two times before fall. Sometimes it's only, it could be as less as one meeting. See, the plant, the capital is pretty easy. Um, But um, sometimes there'll be two meetings because one, they'll, the um, departments will come into, tell you what it is and then the second and then the second time you vote type of thing so right. and do we vote on those committees if we're a liaison or do we yes yep you vote so i vote for i vote on those when i'm on representing i'm as a member of cpa or capital or i vote if i am member of finance because it does on the warrant it says recommended by capital recommended by finance right. okay all right I, I'd consider capital, but I have to think about this. I got to really look at my schedule. I'm just flat out right now. What is okay. the commitment? What is the time commitment for uh, the bylaws? 
I don't know on that because that's a new committee. Oh, I see. Well, I have a baby coming soon. I've, I've been, I'm foster, I'm going to be fostering uh, a baby. And I just, I'm really, really reluctant to take on anything else. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, come on, you're muted. Oh, am I muted? No, I'm muted. No, no, I'm no. muted. Oh, just sorry. always. Sorry. Um, <laughs> the bylaw committee has not even met yet. Oh. So uh, there's, I don't see that starting for a couple months. Okay. So maybe I can, I can revisit that again when they get going. Sure. Okay. So we, we have no one on capital right now? No, I'm on capital. The okay. only one that no one's on is bylaws. Okay. But they, like Carolyn said, no one ever met. And they, they listed the people. They had listed finance at one point, but no one stepped up. And I was just, I couldn't do it either. Right. Um, to meetings. So. Um, All right. So can, can I ask you this? Could you get me the dates on the capital? And then if I could cover, can we just, well, I could. Or do you need it needs to be an official liaison? You do on these meet on these types because I think okay. it gets sworn in by Jessica. If you want to take a if you it's there the next meeting for capital is on the 21st coming up, Monday the 21st. So next Monday, it's if you want to take over be or okay. I'll just do this one and you can do, take over next time. It's up what's to the you. One, what's the meeting after that? It will be for fall. I would say oh, I wouldn't okay. have you do both. So I wouldn't have fall. Okay, fine. Yeah, All right. I'll, I'll agree fall. to taking it over for fall. Okay. Okay. So, um, so I, we will Maybe. then, I believe, and tell me if I'm wrong, Carolyn, but I think that Jessica then votes you in, right? Okay. Or you have to say, I, or you, I know I Whatever. had to go down something okay. with Jessica. All right. Am I wrong, Carolyn? Or no? I, yeah, it's it's usually, I would think so. I, I can check. Okay, well, you can let me know, and then I can okay. show up. I mean, we have lots of time before the fall meeting, so. Yeah. I mean, I've just been on it for a while, so I just, it just keeps carrying over. And she called, Jessica calls me every once in a while, and I'll, I'll go sign, do whatever I have to promise. <laughs> I'll, I'll check, because you're there as a liaison. You might not have to, but it, it could be an appointment. Okay. And have to get sworn in, but I'll check. All right. Well, let me know. Okay. All right. Great. So uh, last is liaisons um, on this type of thing. I don't know. I mean, we can talk about it. I just wanted to have something out there. Um, we did this one time and we had liaisons, but it's not like a, a big deal compared to the select board. The select board, it's, it's that's... A bigger deal but it's not a bad thing if we have liaisons because it's helpful um as a liaison if you're part you know a liaison for the school committee then you try to either watch go to the school committee meetings so that you know what's happening um same thing with you know the library or trustees or you know public safety be there in case they need you or have more questions i don't know but anyways, um, if we want to do it, then we all, I would say, let's all pick something or we all participate. But if, if we're too busy and we're not going to do it, then that's probably okay, too. But I'm not going to pick them all up. <laughs> so what's what's the thoughts? Does anybody want to be liaison? I don't, you know, I'm appreciative that we have a full committee, so I'm not going to say too much. I'm just happy that we're all, that we have five people. Yeah, right now I can't really take on anything additional. Okay. I like you. The capital sounds good, interesting, um, but I just, I can't, I can't take on additional things. Okay. Okay, so for now, what we'll do is they can just meet us as a group or call us out, or most of the time they just um, reach out to me anyways, and I'll pass it along if there's something else in addition to one of the departments. Okay, so why don't we just jump right into it, and let's go look at the um, budget book. Yep. <laughs> 
Is it, is it okay done? if I start? <laughs> Are we done? So I, I do want to ask for your in, input um, on how you want to approach it. Uh, I, I did, if you see the, if you had a chance to read my introduction, my letter, I did outline the areas of focus in the budget, um, as well as some of the concerns and the challenges that I see us um, having in the future and what some of the next steps could be. So um, I also, if you notice, we went over the, in the tri, tri board meeting, we did focus, we did summarize and we focused on where the emphasis were in certain departments of where those um, large increases are. So that I want to leave it up to you how you want, how you want us to go through this. Do you want to go department by department? I, I'd like to ask Linda to review where we're at with revenues and um, expenses and what in comparison to the to the last two years to now where we're at and where we're going. Um, so if if I really want, how would you like us to proceed? What's going to be the most valuable to you? I don't think, I mean, all the general stuff, I think you should go through. But as far as each line item on department to department, I don't think you need to do it at this time because we're going to meet each department and go through the line item of each department. So I would save that probably. Okay. Unless anybody has anything different, please speak up anytime anyone has anything different to add. But if we're meeting all the departments, my thinking is you don't really need to go over all those line items. And do you typically, just remind me from last year because I can't remember, do you meet with every department? Yes. Okay. All right. Um, so is it okay to have Linda just kind of give, give you a basic review of where we're at with revenues and expenses and how we're looking to balance the budget for 23? Yes, please. All right. Hmm. Uh, let's see. I am trying to sc screen share. Well, okay. So we started out, is that showing up? Are you seeing an Excel spreadsheet? Yes. yes. Okay. You don't really have to look at it right now because I don't know where I am with it. I just want to know if I could get there. So I'm, I'm just going to, okay. I want to start with the budget book though. It just show what I'm, I'm updating. Let's see where I'm going now. Um, we don't have a spreadsheet. We don't need to spend a lot of time on these, but I just want you to understand because I send them to you each month. Oh, darn. Um, uh, is these, these revenue and uh, the general fund sewer and water reports each month. Are, do you, are you finding these useful? Um, we did start, if you want to look at your, your budget book pages 10 and 11 are basically where our updated, updated revenue um, our, our statuses for the, the for the current year, the fiscal 22 year are through January. So at the end of each month, what we do is um, review the, we have all of the revenues to date and we have all the expenses to date. And it gives us an idea of whether we're on track for 22. And then it also serves as a, uh, a springboard to our predictions um, or double checking our projections for FY23. So we have through January there, and uh, what I have on the screen then is updated through February, and the most significant ones really for planning the next year are going to be showing up at, uh, or are going to be the next month, which will be March. Um, we will get a lot of quarterly payments then, and so that will be three quarters through the year, and that's as, that's as good as it's going to get before town meeting. So that's the one that we look forward to the most. But where we are right now shows that our, um, uh, what, what this does, um, in, in case you are having trouble following on a month to month basis, it does a direct comparison of where we are in 22 versus where we are, where we were in 21 and 22 at the same period of time. That's why I put the yellow line across. So at this time, this year, we have 73.64% of our total revenues broken down by these three categories. Last year at this time, we were just under six, uh, 69%. And uh, the year before, looks like 
eh, 62 something, 62 and a half percent. No, I'm sorry, that's the wrong one. I haven't gone over far enough, 70 percent, which is good, um, which which is really we want to aim to get being closer to FY20 than to 21, which was our dip year. And now you see we're coming back and we're ahead of 22 which is good. Then when we compare the expenses, 63% of our expenditures at this time versus last year at this time, we were at 61. Let me see if I can scooch over there and get our, we were at about closer to 70% in 20. So we're doing pretty well for expenses too. So, um, then we do the same thing. I have it on sewer again through 22 and I'll be sending, I can send these to you. I just really finished them up earlier this week. Um, I'm having trouble seeing my entire screen. Are you seeing it all? Yes. Maybe it's the way I put you, maybe it's where I put the people. Okay. If I, no, I if, better. okay. If, oh, okay. <laughs> now I get our faces out of the way. That's better. Oh, okay. I can put you along the bottom and that makes it work. Um, okay. Um, so the same thing on sewer and then the same thing on water. And as I said, I would do that. Well, I'll get this out to select board and I'll get it to you each month. But I just want to check in with you because I think it is so important when we're looking ahead to, to continue to look where we are right now. Um, have you found this useful? Is it working for you? That was I a question. Would, <laughs> I would say, yes, it's useful. I guess my only question is, is do we have some seasonal bumps and expenses that don't, you know, like if you look at this as a, you know, month by month growth, yes. is there some, you know, March, April, May, June, you know, surge that occurs that could knock us out of, you know, kind of the predicted balance? Right. Well, there are, but the same surges would be happening from year to year, which is why we want to look at. So let me go back to the okay. general fund. We receive certain payments from the state, the rooms and meals tax, the cannabis tax, those come quarterly and they come at the end of the quarter. So we'll receive those at the end of March. So uh, we'll see, we see a jump there every third month. Um, and the cannabis and tax is going to be higher every year. No it's going to be higher year. every quarter for a little while. Uh, we might flatten out. We only have one in. Uh, well, we have one. I should say only one. We have one in now and we have another one on its way. So we will be looking at um, that leveling out and being more predictable going forward. Uh, we've sort of taken the surprise as it comes. Um, we weren't sure what we were getting. And uh, now we're, we are getting a better idea of it. We've really, I think, only had one full quarter and uh, this one should be pretty good. Once we see the end of March, we'll have a better idea of uh, where we were going um, after that. Um, what else was I going to say? Oh, yes, there are other individual um, items. Um, you know, we do quarterly billing of taxes. So there'll be that bump every third month there, a different third month. Uh, same with uh, sewer and water receipts. Uh, the, that's done quarterly as well. So as you go through and see the receipts, you're going to see two months that just go up a little bit and the third one going up quite a bit. Um, they'll be different in each of these categories, but from year to year, they'll be consistent, which is why it's good to take to look back. Right. Uh, and other areas like motor vehicle, those those bills aren't even out yet. And that's in the uh, that's in the local receipts category. That will virtually all be coming in the last quarter. I think that last quarter, um, and uh, so there'll be a surge there. But again, it's the same surge uh, that okay. we would have seen last year in the airport. So so. If I may, just based on your year-to-year -year experiences here, you feel confident here. It looks pretty good. We're we're confident. Yes, we're confident in that these figures line up uh, and justify um, the. Now I can't find my bar because the faces are. It's a little awkward tonight for some reason. Um, maybe if I just get down to just to just see the speaker. Okay, that might work better. Um, okay, now I can go to my tab. So I'm going over to general revenues now, um, which uh, your equivalent in the book, actually, they should be the same. Um, your general revenues are on page 17. And uh, this year, uh, we did, again, include that uh, the year to date. Um, category. So you see that the green columns there are FY22. That's that's the current year. Um, just to remind anyone listening, uh, fiscal year is from July 1 to June. 
And it's the year, uh, so FY22 is the year that began last July 1 and ends on June 30th of this year. So, um, so we then get to line up, we get to look each month, how is that compared to our predictions? Now, what you have in your book is through January, what uh, it has been adjusted this week for February. And once again, we look to be fairly on target where we would expect to be. Now, here's one. I was just talking about motor vehicle. It looks like it's not doing so great. 805,000 projected, but we've only got 108. That's because the bills haven't gone out. So, um, and, and for most of these, we know, we know our, our, our combined knowledge. We don't all know everything, but when we are all in a room and talking about these various categories, there's usually somebody who understands what's going on in each of these categories and whether um, a dip or a surge looks like um, uh, what that means for the entire year. Um, there are other areas like select board uh, receipts. Let me see where that one is, where they were, they were looking great. Well, they are great. I mean, look, we, we projected 125 and it's like 110. And I went in to see Jennifer and I said, Oh, does this mean we can increase it? And she goes, no, I just, I just got, I just got all those receipts in January for uh, in December uh, for the permits. And that is my, that's my big business of the year. There'll be others, but it does not mean I should be, we should be raising it over 125,000. So, um, so then that, that, that third column, the blue column is our 23 projected. And, um, at this time of year, since we've already got the, the budget book is in place and that's in print, we, we would, we will be doing a bit of, um, adjusting as we go. If it looks like the, these categories are particularly strong or particularly weak. Um, here's the cannabis we were just talking about. We had projected it at 22 and we ended up taking 48,000 by the end of last year and we're already at 62 right. year before zero. So this is a complete learning curve for us. We're, we're just figuring it out as we go. Mm -hmm. So based on the fact that we got 62,000 in the first two quarters, we are taking a bit of a leap there into uh, 23. That probably means we could be up to 150, $150,000. When, it, when we're collecting all four quarters at full speed, especially with a, a second one coming in. Um, so I don't think though, oh, there's just a couple of things we've made actually made actual changes in since the book um, for 23, but they will not make a, a, a they will not make a, a much of a difference really. Um, one is doo -doo -doo -doo, one is boat excise. We kind of got into a last minute. What are we going to do with this? We realized, um, you know, understand that we're, we're still we're still learning some things. We haven't been doing this budget all that long. We we, we realized that we have not accounted anywhere for um, motor uh, for uh, uh, chart. Um, what do you call it? channel markers that we have to pay to Northampton based on it being half of the year before's revenues. So we owe them fifteen hundred dollars for the prior year. So since I was about to publish it, I moved that down to 1500 to allow for that. But what we decided again since then, it makes a lot more sense is leave this at 3000 and we put 1500 into the select board budget as a line item to show we need to make that payment. Again, the bottom line, no difference. Um, and the other one we dealt with in a similar way, um, I, I, know, I know you all sometimes get frustrated that we make changes, but um, they really are, they really are for the better. We're, we're, it, it makes things more right. And you'll understand when I explain this one, we uh, increased the inspections to allow for $23,000 for weights and measures. We contract with weight, weights and measures with Northampton. Uh, they, their inspector comes over and does our inspections and then sends out the bills and then our inspections department collects the money. We put it, we put it into a revolving account and when we had enough money, we would pay the contract. Well, with the delay in inspections over 20 and 21, we were getting really behind in those payments and we don't like to have our city next door a little bit frustrated with us and we actually can't pay anything more than is in the revolving account. So what we've really decided we need to do going forward is we're going to, instead of running it through a revolving account, we're going to count those revenues as revenues. So we put that 23,000 in there. And then over in the building inspectors 
uh, budget, we've added a line for $23,000 to pay to weights and measures. Again, an absolutely zero bottom line difference. Right. But it's 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 better because now when we sign a contract that we're going to make a payment within a fiscal year, we can actually we actually will have the funds to make that payment. Um, other than that, we haven't made any changes, but but we will. Oh no, there's one more. Um, and it's to the good. Uh, Dan did some recalculations up at the up at the top and and uh, came up. I think that is 30, 30 something thousand more than you had in the budget. <clears throat> yeah, about thirty three, thirty four thousand more um, based <coughs> on the uh, on corrections to le the tax levy. So what it does is trickle through then and mean that's thirty three thousand less in free cash that we need to use for this budget. So uh, what else can I do? So that um, those are the only changes based on uh, from what you're looking for in your book. And then on the expenditure side, um, the only changes there are exactly what I just mentioned to you before. The uh, select board has gone up by another $1,500 for the channel markers. The uh, inspections department has, hmm, doesn't look like, it should have been, uh, well, maybe it does include it. No, I can't remember. <laughs> Anyways, it, it, it either does or will include the 23,000. 23, I think it does. Is it? I, I don't have your, I don't have it. I think it does, Linda. Okay. All right. Uh, what page is it on? Oh, page 20. Page 20 is the, okay, the summary. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So the inspections budget went up to include that. So. That's pretty much it. Uh, out, out to the right here, this is not in your book, but I, we keep track of each of these areas uh, and how much the total area, education, public safety, general government, which areas are, um, are going up the most. And that becomes, uh, that becomes the, the increases that we addressed, um, that we had addressed in uh, beginning on page 21. Um, was that where we went? Is that where we addressed it? Oh, I, I lived with this thing day and night and I, I have stopped looking at it so I don't have it quite so memorized anymore. But I will study it up for your next meeting so we can find things quickly. Um, so those are, those are the areas of increase. And I guess I have them over, over here. The revenue increase, as we uh, discussed before, the revenues went up by 1.4 million. The budget went up by 1.2. Uh, so we are, uh, that, that's good. Um, we still have a gap. We still have a gap we've always had um, that we all usually have. It's a little bit less than is described in, in your book, which is 800 something thousand. Um, and we're getting much closer to fiscal 19, um, which is where we'd like to be so that we can kind of pick up where we left off before COVID. We kind of got in deep there in 21 <laughs> and a uh, little better in 22, much better in 23. And hopefully if you look back between 19 and 20, what we were trying to do at, um, what we're actively trying to do is get those expenses within the revenues. And we are actively trying to do that again, so that we need less money out of these other sources to balance the budget. So hopefully we will get there. If we could pick up these revenues, they are, they do seem to be doing well. Um, and we'll see. Um, anything more, Carolyn, you want me to, do you want me to go over and, this part. No, just any more questions, and then I, we can start going through the departments. One thing, one more thing I wanted to point out is when we talk with this line that says free cash to balance the budget here, mm -hmm. and I, um, is that we, we've used free cash many times to balance the budget. That's free cash that we certify on July 1 and then go to town meeting in the fall and, and pull it in to balance the budget. This money here that we're using this year to balance budget is our leftover from last year. So we are a full year ahead on the use of free cash. Um, we, you know, we actually technically have several hundred more if we want to anticipate what's coming in in July one. But again, we're trying not to do that. 
And since we do believe we have the opportunity to use ARPA one more time for replacement funding, we thought it might be better to use ARPA and get the town into a position where it is then current in um, allocating um, free cash that we actually have at, 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 at the Springtown meeting rather than looking ahead to the projections for July 1. Questions? I don't have any questions yet. I'm gonna probably, I, I, I probably may want to look at the revenues one more time, more of the line items and, and exactly if it's a one time or, you know, I, I wanna go over each and every um, one, like the fire receipts, police receipts and where the differences are, what your thoughts were on each one. But um, I don't necessarily know if we want to do that right now or do that and, you know, let everybody digest what you just said. Maybe we do that next time. Okay. Well, we are all here, so it's up to you. I mean, this, the revenues are, uh, we've got Dan and Susan and Carolyn, and we are the ones that talk about it uh, oh. at least once a month. So and so if you have things you want to ask us, we are, there's, that's fine. And the other thing is you, uh, you also can ask those with a, the departments that come in but i when we've tried to do things like that in the past we really end up so focused on the budget and that's really what they're coming in to see you about so yeah that, that's up to you yeah they're more focused on the um yeah when when i meet with the departments it's all focused on on um the, the expenses not the revenue mm -hmm. so um i just don't i wasn't sure if it's something that you want needed them to answer those questions or not um they can, so, they can answer them. So if you, if I mean, if you want to take a stab at it, unless someone else has something, I kind of wouldn't mind if you just went through each, just the revenues, just all those line items. So I can just quickly take some notes on, on the, on the increase or whatever it is, what your thoughts were on each one. And you started to, you started, you did some of it, but then um, we did, you know, we bounced around. So I just don't know if you okay. don't mind. All right, let me go back. Thanks. All right, so um, is that so you, you have full screen there? You, you can see. Go down to the uh, local receipts is where I was going with, but someone okay. else might have other questions too. Okay. Yeah, our first category is the property and uh, personal taxes. Uh, yeah. The second category is our net state aid. And then the third category is uh, local receipts. Uh, let me go to the bottom top line there and then and then go back up again. Our local receipts. Yeah, we were looking at uh, $18.2 million in local receipts. And uh, that's up quite a bit from 16.7 that we projected this year, which was only up a little bit from the prior year. And you can see that 22 and 20 are pretty comparable at about 16.7. So we are seeing, we are seeing increases. You see here uh, that here, at, where are we? Um, February. Um, 12.3 million has been received out of a projected 16.7. So I think that helps you understand why we felt we could go up in some of these areas. So let me go back to the top of local receipts and there you are. And actually our uh, excise tax bills went out March 1st, they're due April 1st. We've got about two thirds of that collected at this point. These were numbers that were oh. done as of February, at the end of February. So that will look way better <laughs> at the end of March. <laughs> All right. I wasn't, I wasn't, I should know because I have them, but I, I, I really, I think personal and, uh, and being treasurer are so separate. Sometimes I forget. Yeah, I'm sitting on my excise bills. Of course, they've already gone out. <laughs> no one, no worries. I'll remind you. <laughs> <laughs> So you you want us to run through each of them or you just want to ask questions, Amy? I don't know how you want to do this, but so we can start with motor vehicle and I'm going to focus, my marker here is going to be on 23. Yeah. Projections, okay. Meals excise, uh, yeah. let's do meals and rooms together. I mean, that's $1.2 million. That went down in 21 to $700,000. So, that that's a that's a big big difference. Um, we have already collected uh, seven hundred fifty thousand, and that's for three quarters of the year. 
So, uh, no, it's not for three quarters. That's for half the year. Half the year. We only, that's only September and December. So um, not every quarter is the same, but uh, it's still a pretty good in indication that we are pretty well justified in looking for 400,000 and for 800,000 in meal and rooms. We discussed- so the, the rooms, I'm wondering, and, and maybe it's just that because the rooms are more, they're staying at more expensive rooms, but we could see that the hotels, I mean, there's three hotels right on Route 9 that aren't really being used all that much, I'm thinking, or- looking to be sold or whatever, right? So um, that, yeah, that should chime in on this. Yes. Yeah. Yep. yeah. You said Dan, right, Susan? I did. Yeah. There he is. <laughs> uh, yeah, what we've had is that the found is that the hotels that are open are being booked more and the prices are significantly higher for the rooms. <clears throat> I mean, we're back up to where we were before COVID for mm -hmm. motel. And that's good. So, um, and then, so when I did see some of the places like that, uh, Hadley, meeting house closing that didn't really affect us too much uh, well, that's the conference center that would impact the meals but with the meals i think because of covid prices have gone up significantly going to mcdonald's now and it's nine and ten dollars for a value meal so it's almost double or 50 percent more so we're getting in more more meals tax money Okay. Makes sense. Thank you. So Dan, do you want to take cannabis also? Because we have put in such a big uh, increase and I know that you're the one who answers to the state for what we're putting in for projections. Um, yeah, I think that that's probably a realistic, the 150. We've only, the 62,000 is for one store that's open for half a year. We're probably going to see 62,000 from that, I would assume, from that store for the rest of the year. And another store is opening up in March, which it'll probably go down. The per store take will go down, but I think we'll see an increase substantially in that as well. And then that's also further down, there's another cannabis line where they make a, an economic impact payment every year to us. Okay. And that's going up as well. Is that a fixed number, the economic impact? Yeah, I think the first one, we, 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 we got 50,000 for the one that opened. Yep. And the next, the other one, I think, I believe is 35. Okay. And are you talking about the other line item for this? Yeah, the other cannabis line towards the bottom. Of local. Right. Uh, there it is, line 60. Yeah, it's it's 35 from the second store. So when they open up, they'll they'll be giving us a thirty-five a thirty-five thousand dollar payment next fiscal but, year. Yeah. But that line's not just the impact, but it's also going on, or it's an ongoing, it's not just the initial impact. Uh, right? this is yeah, that's the, every year for the life of the agreement. Yeah. Hmm. Right. Just to differentiate between that and something like sewer impact where they pay us once for for going in, but this is uh, under the uh, agreements we have ongoing payments. I, I'm pretty sure it's a five year agreement. So we'll get 85 a year for the next four years. And then I don't know if it's going to be renegotiated or if it just goes away at that point. But another reason they're in two places is because this we received directly from the town and up above. Um, that's part of what we get from the I, we received this uh, just like we, as we received the meals and rooms that comes quarterly from the state. It's the, it's the, they collect the tax and then they send it back to us. Okay. Penalties and interests we collect in the course of business pilots. Those have mostly come in. That's only two or three of those. Um, at what that are those? 
pilots, which which is that's just the solar fields. Is that what that one is? Pilot. Um, Hadley. Uh, some some of it. Uh, some of it is. Uh, that's uh, Fish and Wildlife pays us annually. Uh, Amherst Housing Authority pays us annually. Yeah, but the solars are now taxed. Okay, we still receive um, we still receive those payments through the select board office. So, I have a question: um, Do we do we receive anything from UMass for? Uh, they've got their own category down here. I, I can come back easily, but yes, sure. Wish it was more. Yep. Sixty thousand, like this year, like the year before, like the year before, like the year before. So, um, that's uh, always something that we would like to see. I'm sorry, the um, the, the Hadley two, the solar ones, they're on a different category. I see that here. That's down at fifteen thousand. That's different than the pilots that we were talking about. Dylan, I can just give you, an, excuse me, just an update on UMass as well. Um, so I will, I have begun meeting again with Tony Morales and um, we are setting up a meeting to, um, to get that meeting together with the chancellor to discuss it because it has been steady for so long, but our, our needs have continued to increase with police and fire. So I'm also going to be working with police and fire and DPW to see what, you know, try to quantify the impact um, of, of what happens. Cause it's not just on the university. It's what happens with the hotels and motels during tournaments and during games. So we are, we hope to have a, you know, a, a good summary of the, of the impact and how that impact continues to grow where we've stayed steady with that. Cause it's, it's been 60,000 as long as I could look back. So I just wanted to let you know that that's kind of in a direction we're hoping to move. Yeah, that sounds good. Thank you. So if I go back to the pilots, the pilot is in, in lieu of taxes, right? For those that's the fish and wildlife. And we get that because they just, we made an agreement with them. And instead of paying taxes, they, is that right? I mean, what is exactly what's in the pilot? Dan, Dan can you answer that? Yeah, the, the Fish and Wildlife is for the Silvio Conti Wildlife Preserve. They okay. make a payment to us, which is, I believe it's somewhere in the twelve dollars or $13,000 range every year, which actually is more than we were getting when it was in chapter land. Hmm. Uh, there's also the town of Amherst has their wastewater treatment plant in Hadley. We get a payment from them, which is close to $3,000 a year. And the housing authority also pay, makes a payment, which is about 4,000 a year. So why does the housing authority make a payment to us? The housing authority from Amherst makes a payment. They're doing, they, they're, they took on our housing authorities. So yeah, why it's, do they it's, it's a Hadley housing authority payment, but Amherst is, is running it. It's for Burke's way portion, oh. not the, the actual uh, senior portion. It's the units that were put in probably in the late eighties, that, that was something that they have to make a payment in lieu of tax by law. Okay. And the um, other one that Linda was talking about at the bottom yeah. is uh, the net metering that this, we get back. Mm -hmm. um, the Hadley two and so yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's net metering uh, that we get back from from them it's not it's not taxation it's the net metering credit okay so it's like the credit so you put solar on your house and they give you credits for it and it's just like except right. we're in a okay all right we also get a payment from the state in the um on the cherry sheet a pilot payment if you can scroll up a little bit linda yep. up to uh, there it is pilot state-owned land that's about a quarter million dollars a year half of that is basically from umass and the other half is skinner state park and there's a few other little pieces in there the bike path and a few other small parcels but 
basically about half of that is from UMass and half is from, from Skinner Park. Dan, do these, do, do, who decides the amount of the pilots? Ah, uh, that's strictly done on the state level. However much the legislature funds it. Okay. In prior years, we've gotten zero. Some years they just refused to fund it back in the early nineties. Okay. All righty. Why doesn't UMass fund it? I mean, if it's UMass land, why is the state? I mean, well, I guess UMass is funded by the state, I guess. Uh, <laughs> Amy, I can tell you, I've had conversations with folks at UMass and they tell me they are the state. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. Okay. Okay, um, this is, okay, so uh, you still wanna go through them, each one, Amy? The uh, well, some pro rata supplemental, this, uh, that, that's for Susan. <laughs> See, some of these I just don't remember, and then yeah. they're kind of off base, so I would always ask the same question. I might ask reminders again next year because I won't remember that the pilot is UMass and Skinner or something. <laughs> No worries. Uh, as far as the supplemental taxes, that's uh, where Dan has added value for a building that has been completed. So homes that have been completed, we send uh, tax bills to uh, the taxpayers for the additional value of their homes. Um, rollback taxes. Uh, Dan, are we going to have any this year? Um, all we have so far is the, the piece on South Maple. Oh, yeah. Okay. That's about eight, eight or nine grand. Yeah. Oh. Okay. That'll be here then. Those are, uh, those are uh, taxes where people have taken land out of chapter land, and we go back and we roll back the tax to charge them what it would be for not farming it. Do you go all the way back from when they got put it in APR? Five years. Oh, five years. And it's not APR. It, it's 61. 61A. Okay. 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 So tax liens redeemed. Those are tax. Uh, those tax titles. These are the people at the end of the year when they uh, taxpayers have not paid their taxes, and then uh, collectors give them two, three more months, and somewhere in September or October for any un paid taxes for the prior fiscal year, uh, Alina's is put on the property. So the fact that there's such an increase this current year, 22, does not mean we've had more people going into tax title, not at all. Um, it is a step up in collections. Um, collections wasn't something that we were actively doing in, 20, in 21. Um, it just seems like things were hard enough. Uh, we still didn't have very many going in in those years, new ones, but we have had uh, some old ones that were that were uh, continuing to languish. And, and uh, we, we've stepped we've stepped up this year. None of that involves uh, only uh, none of this collection this year involves any foreclosures. This is just getting that uh, getting the monthly reminders and being a constant uh, actively trying to collect the money. So that's doing pretty well. It's also a finite source of income because we don't have a lot of new people going in. We can't then say, oh, seven, that's, that's pretty great. Let's make this 100 if we're doing so well already. Oh, it's not going to work that way. We can only collect the outstanding taxes. It's not that big a number. Um, I think the remaining amount is somewhere between 60 and 70,000, maybe closer to 70, but um, which, is, which is pretty good. It was pretty high in those earlier years. You go, that was a lot. Well, those were two particular properties that sold and we finally got it collected back. We had to go to tax. Uh, we did initiate the proceedings in land court um, to, uh, and then ended up with a sale or a settlement and they, they found the money. Um,